Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9. And of course, we are playing as Germany this series. Yay! We're already in June 36. This is going reasonably fast. The big slowdown happens for me, other than just because we stop the clock and I talk forever, is once we hit the war with the Soviets. There's a lot of action going on, but. Um, Clock slows down. Okay, yes, Italy, Abyssinia, uh, annexes is now part of their country. Thought they already did that. I guess the thing is just sort of firing or something. I don't know. Um, no, that won't do anything. Yeah, we'll do CAD quicker, but we're not. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we'll do this now that time between attacks is really important on this. This, you know, as you say, three hours delay removes the delay between attacks. The more we can keep pushing, the better, the better, the better. Okay, um, track and prime mover reliability has increased. Uh, under, yes. Okay. Ah. Let's get on. Well, yeah, let's do one regard at least. Get that going. I don't think we're going to see a danger of getting over 400. I just don't see that in 36. We'll see what happens in 37. Okay, this is another start of a long, no choice here, but there will be some coming up. Start of a long chain that gets you the um, Sudeten Germans. The Sudeten Deutsch Party is what it starts out as. The Congress of the Sudeten Deutsch Party or the Sudeten German Party officials in Cheb that is here, um, I believe. Um, uh, Asked the party leader Conrad Hanline to protect minority rights, autonomy for German citizens, and have a positive attitude towards Germany. So you can see the SDP symbols going on. The SDP. Czechoslovakia as unlike the way I was taught because I was taught during the Cold War um, that Czechoslovakia was a country you know a nation if you will not just a country obviously it was a country but a nation and that the Germans artificially separated no no as we saw especially when I learned um, once they got their independence from the Warsaw Pact oop, Slovaks were out yeah, it was it was an artificial country. You know, like I say, it was a real country, obviously, but it was it wasn't a nation. There really wasn't Czechoslovakia. There was Czechs who wanted to have a big country, and that. But man, I know um, George, nineteen forty one, major contributor is a Czech, and he grew up. He's about my age. Um, grew up um, under the Iron Curtain, and of course, as a Czechoslovakian. And I don't know, you know, obviously he would now call himself a Czech or a Czech, Czechia, Czechian or whatever the current fad um, of calling Czechs. But um, 
these other people didn't necessarily want that so it was a artificial state and it was sort of meant to be big enough and strong enough to you know not be swallowed up by all of its neighbors but they didn't have a national unity now of course unlike say the slovaks the germans really from the beginning wanted to become part of a german nation and i say that because they had originally been part of the austrian german nation and if it was going to be that or um, germany they wanted that way okay secretary of public information has advanced so we want to stop that and hydrophones have advanced. We can listen underwater better. Yay. Of course, the big thing is submarines, but maybe we'll hear some mermaids talk. Um, construction, construction railroad network. See all that supply throughput. And um, yeah, let's do at least one of those. I don't think those are as important as some of the others, like railway efficiency. Railways really help. Okay, okay, we lost a little bit there. And we would give them money for crude oil. Um, okay. And what do you want? Um, no, you're getting it from the Romanians. No, we'll steal yours later. Max Schmeling's victory um, against Joe Lewis. Yay. Germany's proud. They, their fighter defeated Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling later became good friends after the war. Um, what movie I watched recently? Um, You're in the Army now, I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it was that. Sort of a musical um joe lewis was in it i'm um, playing himself so light cruiser engines okay um i think that's one we're gonna let continue yeah we're gonna get it up to with the other ones keep them fast now i want to see if i can sell more supplies to the u.s because i want more money big time more money not just A little bit over the current needs but big time okay new industrial zone that's part of the reason because it's one percent more i see but cost manpower that's fine mm, product cost, energy okay yeah construction new industrial zone we'll cancel that for them until we're ready to get back on that and grand battle plan Still not sure on Hearts of Iron 4, and obviously these things can be modded. Um, Black Ice just hasn't yet, and I remember quite some time ago, Podcat was sort of surprised when he was looking at some Black Ice on, online, you know, for one of the playthroughs. And no, they haven't changed that. And he, I think, rightfully concluded that they just haven't gotten around to it yet. Not that they agree with it, it's just so much to change. Whether, the, how much of these things should be mutually exclusive? I think some should. Obviously, Bonsai charges that sort of specialist for Japan um, and some stuff, but, well, yeah, we'll do this. And we have a tenth of a percent or whatever about that. Mm. Might as well take advantage of it. Yeah, let's do that. Do some time between attacks. And medium fuel tanks, which allows us to um, stop that. And we're going to come down here and... Uh, sort of thinking of researching something else, quite honestly. Um, I'm waiting for 37. That's well, what I really would, if I'm going to push ahead, I want to push 
ahead on things that um, like getting basic, you know, education, you know, get that's something that's a multiplier to other developments sooner. Environments. Well, let's do steel casting. I'm not sure if we need that, but I think we might for some of these later on. So we'll do that, but we'll come back to those for sure. Okay, next our Enschdelling Fortress was built. 30 lines were built from 35 to 38 in Baden-Württemberg. So obviously some of these things were built before. Now we're just continuing it or something. I don't know. Sort of to talk about it and put it in. I like this educational element that Revolver Held's doing. Um, in Baden and Württemberg and ran from Edinburgh to Bursing along the Nectar, Bursing, okay, along the Enzat, sorry, uh, I can maybe pronounce some of these things, but, um, don't really know, and I don't know how much, together with the Wetero main Tumbler positions and the Bavarian Czech, um, border positions should be prevented, um, that, be prevented that a Franco-Czechoslovak alliance during military offensives against the German right succeeds in rapid um, unification and thus separ separation of the South Germany. So basically these are designed to keep these guys separated. Okay, so we'll get Mosbach, Kunzling, and Hellborn. Okay, where are they? Okay. Mernslau. Okay, there's Mosbach. There we go. And there, okay, so it's these three provinces. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, 1,200 supplies, nine money. That's it's nothing. Um, popularity, that's cool. Opposed to losing popularity. Popularity, that's cool. And we'll get some minor petty little defenses. Which is nice. Though, of course, we hope never to need them. They, of course, hope that too, because it's well interior. Okay. Um, growing up a kid, as a kid, um, Watch lots of Hogan's Heroes, and the idea of the sort of sentry box, the German soldier in the sentry box, sort of fascinated me then. And then I came across um, sort of a somewhat of an article um, on one of the websites I frequent. It's about collecting German uniforms and things. And it was about these, the SA sentry boxes. And they eventually came up with a um, regulation for them. And um, one of the many interesting things just... Um, there is a picture one you can tell particularly from the roof it's glossy and it's red and so all of this is you know glossy red with the white and then of course the black um, swastika there like the flag and um, where a lot of like the German army have the red um, white and black um, chevron type design thingies and some of the other groups have different, but eventually the SA had their own um, art, and this is like an article in one of the SA magazines on just how tall it should be, dimensions, because you, know, you build them your, you know, your each little group build them yourself. They didn't come from some central factory, but so you have sentry boxes, and I thought this was cool. Now, one of the reasons I'm talking about this, if any of you guys ever find a color photograph of one of these, I would love to have it. Um, so you can contact me whether on this channel and I can give you a place to upload or download something or whatever or you can contact me a little easier to attach something um, well not with a swastika in it but um, you can, we can do it privately um, on the paradox forum uh, love to have a color photograph of one of these in, in bright red that would be cool that really would be cool to, just for the event and talking about that. So let me know. So in, installation and security gain that. So we're doing SA security boxes. I just thought that's a, it was sort of a cool sort of over top German thing. Bright red sentry box with a big swastika. So we all know who you are. Okay. Now, right now during this time period, we have um, the Hindenburg, the one that blows up. Um, 
flying around around Germany um, over to New York and back does that several times I know um, big hit you know big big huge thing up in the sky is a big hit and you can really sort of see if you remember looking inside of the Hindenburg how the wind you had to sort of walk to the edge and look down because of the angle of stuff how they're just on this little teeny bottom part of it and all the rest is filled with gas and you could go up into the crude part that will walk through the center of it but they're just down a little bit of the bottom part of it here and all the rest is gas but still giant huge thing so um since the lz 129 is doing so well we're going to build another one there is currently this there's also the Graf zeppelin which uh the 28 or the 27 i forget which one the number um right in that number range though is is flying around it's an older design um but it's going to be retired once we get this new big Graf Zeppelin II out here. So, and no, I don't give you a, the option not to because the Nazis would have done it and it's yet to blow up. It's sort of the hindsight thing that all of us would go, no, we're not going to build a um, uh, flying bomb to put passengers in. Yes, I know all fuel tanks and aircraft could, could catch on fire and blow up, but a big gas bag is much much more challenging shall we say to keep from blowing up okay nobel prize of 1935 which you give sort of after that year because it's something that happened in 35 was what you're covering peace prize of 1935 should be awarded to carl von osentritsky sorry i'm butchering it um a german journalist due to his prison term he could not receive it yet but now with the end of his imprisonment he should get um, the award handed over in Oslo. Oslo. Um, Hermann Goering has already twice convinced him not to accept the prize, but without success, um, insist, he insists on traveling to Oslo. The Gestapo will recommend not allowing him to leave to Os leave, leave for Oslo. I should be, I, see, again, I no longer have my editor with me, so I'm sort of copying and pasting stuff, and some of it's from Google Translate. Sorry, people because it would um, damage German's reputation because he's sort of um, uh, an anti-Nazi journalist type guy. So we could refuse departure, which was um, uh, what they did, or we can allow departure. So um, we will gain descent, because this is not just, this is him, but it's not just him. Um, and we're gonna do the historical thing because I know there's some other stuff going on after it, because if we, you'll actually get some bonuses by taking this hit um, but you can go for the sort of cheap out and let him go um, but we're going to refuse departure oh and what tech just came up I'm rolling artillery barrages that's here yes okay we can now roll the artillery barrages forward better faster I don't know more accurately, though that sort of seems uh, um, oxym uh, oxymoronic, or I don't know. Maybe just get them started at the right time. Um, okay, 37 technologies, assault concentration, we're going to do that. Because that will... Um, we want superior firepower, which needs this at least three, so we'll start this early. By 1940, I want to really be getting that superior firepower in there. Get a larger division. Do we give them fuel for money? Sure. Go to here. Over requirements, but not by too much. Let's see, who can we... Oh, pause. Who can we sell more to? Can we sell to the Soviets yet? I know some trade agreements will help us now. Um, well, yeah, you know, they don't have any money right now. France doesn't like us enough. Sweden. They've just pissed off some people up there. I know it was Norway, but... Hmm. Well, the US. Oh, not yet. Yugoslavia. Do you have any money? You got a bit of money. Want some supplies? Not enough. Okay. Let's see. What uh, money for crude? 
We'll take the hit for a little while. I want to get more supply money coming in. Okay. Streamline German police structure. Yes. We're done. So pull that side. That starts out. You want to do this. The order police. I um, won't go into it in too much detail here, but this is, um, uh, again, under the SS, um, streamlining out um, sort of the national police forces compared to all the various different police type units around. Uh, that's, I believe, Walter Delug. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, Deleg. Um, he is also in the SS, but that's him in his police uniform. We can merge our police forces and gain a, some of that stuff, or we can decide not to. Yes, we want to do this because we will get um, other good events coming. Giant infrastructure projects. Okay, well. This won't help us this year, but next year we should get an event that will, hopefully at the beginning of the year, that will um, give us another giant infrastructure project. You got a free one with your um, uh, Autobahn that I do with TRE, so you get one. Well, as free as the um, effects costs for that, which are considerable, um, are there, but... As free as that. Okay, well, we're going to start on all these guys. Get our artillery going. Good. Oh, now the Soviets. Money for crude oil. I want more money. Okay. Okay, decline. Okay, not just... Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to... Uh, no. No, I don't need... No, we're doing fine with crude oil. Let's just see if we can sell more supplies. Good. German or U.S. buy German products. We're good people. We like Father Cog Coglin too. We think he's cool. He shouts on the radio a lot. I like the guy in Germany or two. We're for social justice as well. We want social justice. Hey, where are you so socialist? We're national socialist. And ordering the battleship Bismarck. Okay, this is a not a TRE event. But yay, we'll take it. Bismarck battleship laid down. 1,500 metal. Good. We're slowly digging our way out of the metal hole. I don't think it's in the production queue, is it? No, or it's just going to happen eventually here. Oh, we're down at medium popularity. We need something to improve our popular popularity. Okay. I thought this was fascinating. Um, the 1,000th anniversary of Heinrich the First death. That's Heinrich Himmler. He believes say, he's a reincarnation of Heinrich the First, or Heinrich the First, um, founder of the First German Reich or whatever. As he sees it, that's a coin from the period with supposedly his image on it. Um, so I thought it was interesting that Hitler. Oh, well, there's a lot of people or SS guys. He really sort of made a big show of, of doing this on his anniversary of his death not just his birthday but his anniversary of his death and him sort of reveling in it and doing all this stuff and laying the wreath thought it was quite interesting um you may not but to me knowing how these people think and view themselves how so he really believed himself to be a reincarnation of him um you know i don't know how many people think that they were a reincarnation of a peasant from that time because, you know, there's a lot of people that think they were the reincarnation of this king or that prince or this great knight or just, you know, not so many people. Oh, yeah, I was I'm a reincarnation of some guy who who, um, you know, grew wheat out in the, in the you know, fields. Eh, you know. OK, assign the um, Teshnish Neolith, um, known as Tino. 
they always had really cool um, graphics for Tino. Um, technical Emergency Corps. So this is basically a um, um, mm -hmm. it's a repair corps, but it just also uh, it was a corps of engineers, technicians, and specialists in construction work. Obviously, if there isn't, um, they're not just sitting around on their asses. If there isn't a um, emergency or something, um, they're they're doing all kinds of work, but definitely come out for various things and are very important eventually for the civil defense programs. Okay, return manpower back to the pool from building air bases in eastern Prussia. Yay. Do we have a bunch of these kind of things? Me and other, that wasn't mine, other modders that will for a while reduce manpower because it takes manpower to do things. And other times it, um, you know, they get you get back from it. Okay. Um, diplomatic reports from Geneva. In the General Assembly of the League of Nations during its session on July 3rd, 1936, Stefan Lux, a Czechoslovakian Jewish journalist born in Vienna in 1888, committed suicide to protest the rise of Nazism and the anti-Semitic um, Nuremberg laws in Germany. Lux was a regular in the League's press gallery in the morning of July 3rd. He rose during the proceedings, called the Secretary General Joseph um, Avenel by name and cried, "Cesse le dernier coup." This is a blow, this is the last blow and shot himself. Um, the big thing I disagree with this, of course, is shooting yourself as opposed to shooting a Nazi. Um, no, I'm not recommending you go out and shoot a Nazi nowadays because they're not in power anywhere and they they, in my opinion, they're stupid, idiotic, and are harmful. But if they want to roam around with their arm bands and do stiff arm salutes fine if they actually really get in power i know everybody is you know trump is hitler trump ain't hitler trump is a moderate republican he has he's a you know he says a lot of stupid things yes i agree he says a lot of stupid things my crowd is bigger than any other crowd before you look at all the photos yes and you look at everybody else's photos and they're larger yeah whatever um but he ain't hitler and all these supposed right-wing group things you see. In Virginia, there was this right-wing Nazi guys with tiki torches. Yeah, they get 300 people out of a nation of, what, 300 million? They get 300 guys to march. Those aren't 300 locals. Those are like 300 guys get off work from somewhere all over America and come and march in some parade. Yeah. So if that's all the Nazis you can find to come and do it. Yeah, I know there's older guys and other people that couldn't make it. But so what if there's 3,000 Nazis in America that are whatever, eh, whatever. But if they got in power, you know, if they actually were like in power in Germany or something, then, you know, okay, that's a different matter. Then then, then we're really fighting the real, the real evils, not just playing around with um, guys that want to, wear armbands so but i wanted him to be remembered and it was a fairly shocking thing in, in vienna or um in um not vienna um the league of nations in um, um in wherever um switzerland okay return manpower back to the pool from building the pina munde research facility we got our not quite free but a little cheaper rocket research facility. We're still going to get like, I don't know, 300, 340 back from, I took 400, but so we're getting a great bulk of it back from the SA event eventually before the war breaks out. So realize that there's going to jump to whatever this number is, plus about another 300 plus. Okay, new construction zone, great. Um, so when you're playing, yes, you'll see the... You know, you're down to a thousand at this point. Obviously, we're not really building much, but... Recruiting things up. Um, but you'll get more back. Okay, um, small warship sonars. Good, we can spot submarines. At least hear them. Oh, no, those are sonars, so you ping them off. Hydrophones just hear them. Uh, yeah, might as well do this one first. I don't know why, but it doesn't have negatives. Uh, 
So, you know, this is... I think I've been noticing a bit of the phenomenon since back in the 80s when I was in college. A lot of the college students wanted to have that 1960s sort of fight or revolution or doing something important, fighting for the for the good of whatever, you know. Back in the 60s and 70s, it was against the Vietnam War and the draft, but they wanted some modern thing. And there really, really wasn't much. I remember the, the leftist loons would protest even at my university against... Uh, you know, the Salvadorian death squads and whatever. Okay. And, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, Salvadorian death squads aren't the best thing in the world, but hey, they're not the worst thing in the world either. They're killing communists and a lot of innocent people too, you know, but yeah, you know, I don't really like them either, but hey, but now they've gone off the rails again and they're, I think, artificially creating um, problems. Okay. See, there's the L. 29 um, LZ 29 129 ah, LZ 129 Hindenburg the big guy up there okay and it's the LZ LZ 127 Graf Zeppelin there together flying over and this is the old picture and I found the new thing this was part of a um, an election campaign I found out later on after I made this thing I just thought it was impressive that the, and it, I'm pretty sure it's not a, 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 a period version of Photoshop I know it's not an actual Photoshop photo but you can sort of look at this stuff, and it looks pretty pretty convincing that they actually got them up near each other. And they did fly over the city at the same time, but it, theoretically they could have did photo trickery and put them together. But they were up over this city at the same time, over Frankfurt, and actually several other cities. They had a whole path flying around promoting up one of the elections happening in um, 36. So they were dropping leaflets from it, from them. So they had the two active zeppelins up together at the same time. That'd just be cool to see. Okay, deep battle doctrine. Okay, well. Let's do this. Continue with our research of artillery. Okay. Um... Jalab Komen, um, July Agreement. Um, Kurt Chesnick, this guy here, um, Chancellor of Austria, um, gave up his anti-Nazi program and on July 11, 1936, signed the Austro-German Agreement, um, also known as the July Agreement, which among other uh, concessions allows the release of Nazi Party members from internment camps. So they arrested a lot of Nazi Party members um, after... here. Uh, um, since the failed 1934 coup in, um, and the inclusion of two national socialists in his cabinet. So these people have been locked up since July 1936 when they shot and killed the Prime Minister of Austria. Um, not Schuschnigg, uh, starts with an E, Egligen or whatever. I'm sorry, I don't know. Now this guy here, he's a fascist. Um, this is the Austrian fascist party flag, which is this guy's party. And so you really have a case, and I've looked into this more and more. Um, these guys are not Nazis. These guys are fascists. They have no particular anti-Jew. I'm not saying they, uh, you know, they're suggesting, hey, yeah, I love Jews is better than anybody else on the planet. No, I'm not suggesting anything like that. But they were not particularly anti-Jewish. There was a lot of Jewish influence. Now, to me, that's a good thing. Some people think that's a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing. There were a lot of Jewish influence in Austria, historically going way back. Um, and continue, you know, I'm back to, you know, the 18th century and before. Um, and continued up there. And this whole, so this, so this was very, uh, a fascist organization. Um, and so... And it was very much fighting against the, the National Socialist Organization because National Socialism, one of the core tenets of National Socialism of Hitler and Germany, in this, as opposed to putting the two words together or some modern version of it, but a core tenet of it was all Germans living in the same state, same country, not broken up into Austria, 
not part of some other country like Czechoslovakia or Poland. Um, you know, all Germans together in Germany. That was a core fundamental element of it, um, which is different than some other stuff. So, yes, National Socialism has many similarities economically um, speaking, ideologically. Their, their economic I ideas are very similar. Not identical, but very similar. And that's how leftists see the world. And I say that because it's not just communists, but socialists. And they, they see economics as the main determining factor of why you join and do things. And I, you know, I've gone on about this at other times. Um, but so I won't hear. But so leftists look at economic programs as, as sort of the ideology thing and go, fascism, national socialism. Yeah, they, I can't tell the difference. They're the same. No, they're not. They very much are very different. Economically, they're about the same. But um, Germany's national socialism is this whole other sort of um, cultural phenomenon. And it really is that it's this sort of new identity, this new way of doing things that um, isn't bound primarily by um, economics and economic organization. So... Um, it's very different. Um, and at times, especially when Hitler's trying to get in power, he's playing up his, you know, family values and his sort of support in Christian Christianity. But really, he's an anti-Christian. And if you look at the Nazi Christian movement, which is really gone, really gone by 36, so I don't deal with it much. But it's sort of there in 34, 35. Um, he's trying to create a Nazi state church that is a um, pseudo-Christian church, but really not. And all of the major Christian leaders, all of the major Christian leaders from all of the different factions reject it out of hand. And so there's just a few sycophantic um, Nazi Christians that some people try to promote, point to today to go, oh, this Christian, no. They were neo-paganistic elements. That is not what um, the, uh, I forget, um, the Fatherland Party or the Fatherland Front. I think it's the Fatherland Front is um, this flag in his fascist group, Fatherland Front. That's not, these guys were um, generally fairly strong Catholics. They weren't trying to establish a neo-paganistic society um, that the Nazis were. So they were battling the Nazis. So economically, and in agreement that they were against communists together, I mean, both the Nazis and the, the fascists were against communists. But these people were really trying to create a, a new state uh, organization, not the old Austria before, you know, the World War I, whether they wanted to get their, um, their Kaiser, um, the Haps Otto Habsburg, um, or whether the Hungarians would get, Hungarians would get him, who's living basically in Paris at this time, so I'm pointing at Paris, um, whether they would get him back, because they were trying to get him back, as it, to be the king of Austria, or whether he come back and be the king of Austria, or I mean, king of Hungary, or the king of Austria, or both, I don't know. Um, but they, but these people weren't like going to strip everybody of their noble tit titles, but they weren't going to have the old nobility running the country. They weren't, um, you know, the old order, the the ancient regime trying to restore itself. Now these were a new model fascist type believers trying to organize up a, a new model state on modernistic lines as opposed to tradi traditionalistic um, patronages and other sort of um, or you know traditional organizations. But they weren't trying to change the culture away from a Christian-centered culture. And this is very important. You see this a lot going on in Bavaria, the, the Christian, you know, the Catholic elements of Christianity fighting the, the, the Nazis at many stages, even... And again, I've read some books on this stuff, and it's very fascinating. Um, and they would protest. I mean, come out and in there. Thousands, tens of thousands. Wouldn't get reported in the papers. This is why it's been sort of hard to be studied, because they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't report on paper. But for days after days in some of these um, cases, uh, the Catholics would flood out and just stop up the city, at least at, like at night. And the police just, after a while, go... Um, we can't arrest these people. In fact, probably a lot of the policemen sort of agreed with the, the Catholic protesters. But they were coming out and protesting various national socialist laws, protesting against the Gauleiters. And then things would sort of come to the head. And then 
the Fuhrer found out about the problems and would solve it and side with the protesters. Because was, the Fuhrer always sort of sent out one of his Gauleiters to try a new policy somewhere. Um, and if it worked and the people accepted it, great, it would get spread around Germany. But if there was a reaction against it, protests and demonstrations against it, uh, the Fuhrer would hear about the corruption or hear about this uh, or that Gauleiter or some other guy going too far in his programs. Oh, we're not supposed to be doing that. And the Fuhrer would send a message and everyone would cheer and the Fuhrer saved us. So it was always sort of done initially by some, because they would sort of whatever new, whether it's a euthanasia program or um, some sort of requiring um, in all classrooms, um, a picture of Hitler, including in religious schools, a picture of Hitler up, and then people would protest, and, oh, no, no, we didn't mean that. He just went too far. And so they would do these kind of things. And they also, there was similar stuff in the, in the um, Protestant regions, too. Um, so that Hitler was trying to reorganize society socially, not just like government, like better government efficiency. These guys were government efficiency improvements. These guys were not trying to create this new new man, this new whatever. They were a modern state, yes, as opposed to the old pre-World War I Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was, you know, sort of antiquated um, various elements that are even more, more um, I want to say nutty, but they're not necessarily nutty, but more... Um, you know, different by, you know, this little town here is some little whatever that has different laws than the rest of this other province and, you know, different police, you know, all kinds of screwy stuff that was, you know, going on in Germany. It's even more so, to my understanding, in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So they wanted to, to organize that up. So these guys were fascists. But they were fighting against the Nazis. So, but now, because of pressure, and it's been a couple of years, we get the July Agreement. And I've learned a bit more about this, and this was mainly pushed for, and the main, and the ambassador was Franz von Papen. You remember that that guy who was going to keep Hitler in check as his vice chancellor. Once Hitler gets rid of the idea of a vice chancellor, and you know Hindenburg's gone, von Papen's out of a job, but hey, he wants to be sort of a loyal supporter. He gets, and he's a uber Catholic. Um, Franz von Papen is a very much an uber Catholic. He gets sent on the mission down to, at some point, but like a year or two before this, down to Austria to try to, his goal, and eventually he achieves it, is to bring Austria into the Reich peacefully. And this is one of his stages. So this is Franz von Papen's work. I've done a whole event series chain dealing with all of this stuff that eventually gets Austria into Germany, but it's a um, long thing, so as you can tell, I've been studying some about it. Okay, establish the underground, uh, uh, under group, underground, I guess it's just misspelled, oil lubrication plant and storages. Um, already in 1934, the Reich government established the Economic Research Society. I won't try the um, WIFO. No, they misspelled WIFI. No, WIFO. Okay. As, camouflage, as a camouflage company for the Reich's secret rearmament policy in case of war, the Reich administration is expected to face a blockade by its enemies who would aim to cut off the Reich from essential imports of crude oil. The minister attending this. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So we pay some supplies, money, and get more tax bonuses. Okay, we'll do that. We'll go for it. Looks like a cool underground plant. And, you know, mentioning the underground plant, it made me think that they at this time, and I've watched some movies, you know, done out of England, um, they really thought um, that you were going to have waves and waves of planes and cities were just going to be blasted out. Now, of course, you can go, yeah, there sort of kind of was, but, um, y you know, it wasn't quite as bad as they thought it was going to be. Um, they really thought it was going to be, um, the bombing was going to be so much more effective in the 20s and 30s. Um, not that it was completely ineffective, because we can see, you know, but it was sort of at the very end of the war, almost in the last days, that finally Bomber Harris got his thousand plane raid. And, you know. Okay. Hitler Youth um, bicycling trips. Hitler Youth received a formal welcome at the um, Hover Railway Station in Sussex. It's in England. 
um, I guess it does say this, uh, July 36, this is from a photograph from a newspaper article, um, July 36, should we keep sending HJ cycling trips around Britain? And I have, since I've made this event, I have seen a, um, a bit about this in one of the documentaries that I've been watching. Um, that yeah, they did a lot of these bicycling trips, and the boys were encouraged to keep notes. You know, geographic notes, you know, sort of just a trip log. But they were encouraged to, you know, know, you know, and the, they definitely went to Britain. Obviously, this is a photographic proof of it. But they were also going to Holland, Belgium, France, you know, Poland, Czechoslovakia, um, Austria, wherever, Italy. And they were taking geographical notes, Denmark, and, you know, so that later if they were going by, you know, sketch, uh, you know, where the church tower was or some other tall building so that they would know the terrain when they were going to later invade. Um, this was all very much part of the plan. So uh, we can send them or not. We're going to send them. Cost us money. So I'm, the reason this costs money, where most of my stuff costs um, supplies, is because this is paying for stuff overseas. Because money is my what I consider international payments as opposed to domestic payments. Okay, Bernard Russimer and Ellie Beinhorn Mary. That's him and her. Um, we'll see a bit more about her, but uh, she's an aviatrix. Um, much better pilot, I would say, than um, uh, Amelia Earhart. So, but the sort of racing king and the um, at least one of the um, pilot queens of Germany get married, lose descent. We actually lose a little bit of national or what? No, we don't. It's uh, the way it's reporting. It's just a it's a minor percentage, but. Now we find a little bit more about her. She's a long distance flyer. There's her in one of her airplanes and stuff. You can read about that in a little bit more. Because, um, you know, she flies uh, from Panama. Yes, she flies all over the place. Okay. Um, money. Crude oil. Okay. It's Romania. Can we sell more supplies to America? We want to sell supplies to America. Yay. Buy supplies. Good. I'm trying to build up my cash reserves. This is going way down. I want to be up in the thousands, multiple thousands. The Spanish Civil War breaks out. Um, okay. Yeah, I know I'm trying to increase, but minor de minor costs. Yes, we will intervene in the Spanish Civil War. Okay, submarine batteries have advanced. That is great. So, and it looks like a lot of other techs are waiting for that. Okay, that's grayed out. Um, let's start with that because I think that will be the first one. I, oh, well, well, let's stop that. We're already pushing too far ahead. But we got a bunch of new good techs there that we can research. Okay, artillery unit training has advanced and that we're going to stop. Um, yes. Good, now we're really starting to build things back up here.
see money for supplies because they're in the midst of a war. And we'll no longer see that. Okay, well. As you can see, we're still building. We haven't even got to our first round of industrial capacity increase, and we're already in July 36, almost done with that. I did check um, my la after I got the, um, the different stages, checked uh, my last playthrough, and I did not go over the, um, the maximums last time, so we'll see this time. There may be something going on different, but I don't think so. So, okay. And that gives us a little bit there, but let's so let's come over here now for submarines. And we obviously we have those that are really pushing it. Um, well, we're gonna start out with just that. Those are gonna be we're gonna build those sooner. They're much cheaper and they're still useful raiding off of places. Heavy AA guns, great, and that is as far as we want to go on that for now. Any other subtext that I want to do now? No. We'll wait on that a little bit. Uh, no, 38. Oh, mountain infantry activation. We'll go with that. That sounds good. Oh, okay, infantry unit combined arms has advanced. That is spectacular. Don't think of different adjectives. I don't keep saying the same thing over and over. Tank destroyer advance. And that's grayed out. Okay, so that allows us, it requires us or whatever to. Let's come over here and do this. Do this. We're pushing ahead a little bit. Nocter Amazonian. I thought these are cool. Both as in a cool party as, in, as well as a. Um, interesting aspect of national socialism this goes to multiple things including what i was just talking about and trying to create a different society these are some of the elements of trying to create other um non-christian holidays um so now this is a fascinating terrible guy but fascinating guy ss brigade Führer christian weber we'll hear more about him later he is the city or a city councilor of Munich. He is sort of one of the alt kameraden of Adolf Hitler down here, and so he's a sort of a um, you know prominent big guy here. So um, the Knight of the Amazon. Now this is after the sort of Brown Derby races of the day and other things going on. Um, sort of a big night party with lots of beer and historical costumes, horse parade, naked women. That's these. These are actually fairly. I think they're wearing a little bit of clothing, but not much. Um, heavy drinking to help establish pre-Christian German values. These young women are recruited from the BDM and are happy to do their duty for the party. So this is all sort of um, theming. This is theme. These are, I do believe, um, actual color photographs from this, the 1936 one. There's also they, they're early, and we'll see who comes some later ones. There's the poster from this year's. Um, so we'll gain popularity or no, but we'll spend the supplies to gain some popularity. So a big bash in Munich, guys. Okay, well, we're back up to high popularity. That's good, and we'll no longer receive money for fuel. That's bad. U.S., do you want to buy some supplies? Yay! Okay, and now that we have more popularity. Ah, uh, 
3737 text. Now let's come down here and mountain warfare equipment as well. Take a long time to get it. It's 10. Oh, we sell more, do we? Okay, um, yeah, I've got to look over here. Oh, well, 10 percent. I forget we just had one. Um, yeah, let's start out with, um, flying boats. I like flying boats. They're good sub spotters. Good, thank you, U.S. Keep funding our militarization efforts. German, in real life, Germany had a massive problem with um, the situation. Um, either people didn't have money Germany wanted, meaning um, some sort of, you know, money that wasn't really worth much. Oh, yeah, if Germany wanted to buy something made in, um, you know, a large amount of something made in, uh, you know, Paraguay here or Uruguay, it would be worth anything else. But unless Germany was actually buying something, you know, maybe in Argentina, you know, I don't know beef, or, you know, cattle or whatnot. But unless they were, unless the money was, um, unless they wanted to in lar large quantities buy something from the country, country, the money was worthless. Or a lot of the other countries were having enough problems. So say, I don't know, something like like radios. <laughs> France was having enough problems selling in the domestic production of radios. So Germany was having a large uh, um, deficit in trade. They needed to bring in a lot of resources like we are trying to do. And they had a really hard time trying to sell products uh, to countries um, historically. And that was a massive problem. Much bigger than we're facing now. One of the limited things. Okay, another one from Third Reich Events. Oh, the cruiser Blucher. Yes, we'll take that. And as you can see, well, no, this isn't. This is just gets the historical model and whatnot. But man, what? Oh, uh, armor plate thickness. Yeah, we don't want to push that one too far ahead. But no, okay, that one doesn't unlock here. What will unlock here? Um, so we can start medium. Oh, small caliber. Okay, we're already doing small caliber tank guns. So we're already working that. Just sort of pick one, but um, hmm. rather do a technical thing that might affect production. So maybe submarine in engines. Um, yeah. Oh, the first Moscow show trials. Kill all the competent people. They may, you may be able, may overthrow us. Keep the incompetence. Okay, reorganization. We're going to take the war ministry. Oh, we've gone to a 50-50, but again, the only negative thing. Well, officer recruitment, 1.5%. That's our negative. And recruitment time, well, that's negative, but we're not recruiting any new units, so it doesn't matter. So, nah, it doesn't matter. We'll take that. We'll probably, I don't know whether we got the positive or the negative. Hope for the positive. Okay, West Prussia, yes, we want more air bases. We need more air bases. Trust me, they get filled up. Okay, aircraft carrier technology. So now we've at least achieved the basics on how to make an aircraft carrier. Okay, um, yeah, we have enough um, whatnot. Oh, pause. Well, when we get more things, we'll we'll invest a little bit of time into those. Okay, and oh, Cuban. Okay, um, Spanish Civil War. What to do? Um, we shall break the Reds. Supplies, manpower, money, fuel. We can afford all that, and that's again why we do lots of overproduction of supplies. Lose five in descent, so that'll clear out all of our descent, and make sure that we have these fully done, so that. We don't do that. Okay, the NSKK traffic police. 
We've already talked about how they um, had a lot of schools for teaching motor mechanics, how to drive, and all that kind of stuff. And they were definitely that. But they were also um, the traffic police, both as time goes on locally as well as out on the autobahns. And recently, recently watching something, and they were saying that the autobahns, I, I totally agree and understood that, you know, they build all these great autobahns and they were mostly empty and unused. And, and I think they were right about that because still a lot of people in Germany did not have cars. Um, you know, the Volkswagen is still not even happening yet at all. We'll have events covering that when it comes. It never really happens in any great way before the war breaks out. So people weren't really using the autobahns too much. But they were even sort of saying that that they were officially keeping people off of them you know um out there i'm sort of surprised by that i'm not saying i'm sure that they were wrong now once the war starts and they, uh, they did talk specifically sometimes about the war starts using you know uh for some troop movements and they were talking about how the um the autobahns weren't constructed well enough they were saying asphalt this is what what uh, if i remember that correctly i was watching documentary i watch more than i should or i don't know but i watch a lot and it helps me with this but this was recently within just the last couple of weeks um my dvr thing is full of nazi documentaries a bunch of them i'm sort of saving to make events from um but um you know i've already watched but other ones you know watch and they were saying you know the asphalt wasn't strong enough for something to take it and i'm going oh, all the uh, all the autobahns that i've ever seen are all concrete Every last one of them is concrete. So I don't know what they're talking about, that the, you know, too heavy to move tanks. They had to move the tanks and heavy vehicles on trains. Well, I agree, especially if you were talking like um, Panthers and Tiger Twos, you don't want to chew up the Autobahn. And even Panzer Ones and Panzer, Panzer Twos, you don't necessarily want to run the tracks on the Autobahn if you don't need to. Um, and I, you know, so... Panzer one or two isn't going to chew up the, the autobahn. I, I'm sure you know it's not weight over weight limit. And early Panzer threes and fours, because fours aren't that heavy. The early ones, um, you know, the 1938, 39 ones, they don't have that much armor on them. Um, they're not that heavy. I don't think they're going over weight limits. And they're all stocking bridges. Uh, you know, yeah, they got too heavy for some of the tigers. But so if they're talking tigers and, and heavy panthers, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll grant you that. Um, but I really think the restrictions were coming later once the war was starting. That's just my impression. Again, I don't know for sure, and I don't I don't trust a lot of these documentaries. They're, they're yeah, because once in a while I know they're wrong. I mean, I know they're wrong. Um, and other times, I you know, I just think they're guessing too. So, and it's not that I think they're lying to me. I just think that's the best they got. And one thing I often know they're wrong is the Battle of the Bulge, and they'll show film footage, and they're, by their markings and their thing, their, their 1940s model Panzer IVs. There were no 1940s models Panzer IVs in the German Armed Forces in 1944 for the Battle of the Bulge. If any of them were still around, they had been upgraded. They had... Somebody welded on extra armor and pulled off the short barrel gun and stuck on the long barrel gun and and whatnot and gone through the, you know, whether factory rebuilds or field rebuilds, they would have been rebuilt considerably by that time. They weren't around, and they definitely didn't have the original paint job. So in images, they're lying to me. To the best of my knowledge of these four images making up this one thing, none of this is a lie. This is a real NSKK traffic cop. Here's some other NSKK guys, but they're wearing these um, sort of police um, gorgets or gorgets or various pronunciations of this um, uh, word. And I don't know that any gorget or gorget is wrong or incorrect. It's just different versions, I think, of it. Are wearing it so they're sort of in their police traffic mode. So those are period photos. This is a modern photo, again, I believe, of a real period gorget, and that's a... Um, model of and it goes the stick goes down like this of a paddle you know a sign to you know hold up the you know stop or whatever i think it said may say stop on the other side um you know a real period item to the best of my knowledge so this is none of this is an image a lie i i did not i'm not lying through images if i can help it 
Oh, sometimes I can't help it because I'm talking about a fictitious um, Swiss SS unit that's recruited after Germany conquers Switzerland. Well, obviously, Germany didn't conquer Switzerland, so this unit didn't exist, but I did sort of play the, well, what if Germany did? Well, they would probably recruit an SS mountain unit, and what might it be look like? And then I used another picture of SS mountain troops that, you know, real mountain troops of another SS unit, but use them. So, you know, sometimes I have to lie because we're talking about alt history. Other times, um, like I mentioned, the Coke thing is wrong, needs to be replaced. I don't want to lie if I can if I can help it. Um, so that's why I say some of these documentaries I know are lying to me. So highway patrols to help the police, uh, help the motorists. But they would also, um, these guys driving around in their cars or on their motorcycles, because these are the days, you know, boys and girls, they didn't have cell phones back then. They would also help out motorists that, that, you know, broken down cars, ran out of gas, whatever. So they were also helpers, too, as well as, you know, traffic enforcers. Okay, Ellie Beinhorn. You see, they hear, I didn't even really, it was covered up, didn't even realize it, but this is the the thing I'm, I need to change that. And I'm uh, really frustrated about that. Um, three continents in one day, she... Um, two weeks after her marriage, Ellie flies off on a long planned flight. The way she gets in one day, she goes um, down Damascus um, to Cairo, then back up to Berlin or wherever. So she goes to Europe, Asia, and Africa in one day. Um, great. Those are the countries she lands in. Again, everything's correct about this except for this part, meaning this is a Summer Olympics badge. This is a. Um, obviously a black and white photo of uh, presumably what would be a color well, well maybe it's printed in a magazine that could be black and white <coughs> article you know ad or something but a uh, actual um 1936 coke sponsored ad coke sponsored olympic pin and but that part is wrong so i got it and i got to change this one volk one nation one drink that's wrong but it, they did coca-cola did sponsor the olympics so we make a little money out of that that is real that part is real Coke sponsored the Olympics. We make a little money out of it. I really don't want to lie to people in my education element. Eh, I'm going to make a thumbnail to get you guys to click on it. Eh, you know, might make it seem more exciting than it really is. But um, Festung Front Oder Werther Bogen Bogen was a strongly fortified defensive line which is about 120 kilometers east of Berlin, leads the Wutter River in the north to the south Oder. It was constructed since the mid-1934 by the German Reich, so probably mostly should be already completed by now, so I guess this is uh, Metz or what? Oh, here. Okay, so it, go, okay, so it goes between these two rivers here. So I guess we already have, well, see, they already did include this. Um, covering this up here and this. Um, don't want to take the hit. No, I don't want to take the hit in popularity. I'll pay the supply. So we'll complete this. But that's already sort of covered a bit here. Cool. So now we get a little more pillboxy. And on that note, I think we're going to end this episode. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I really do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Love to see you around more often. And, of course, mentioning that, please post a comment. Just like, thanks for the video, or you suck, or uh, I'm hungry, or I don't know. More comments in the um, comment section of the video the more YouTube is likely to recommend it to other people. I'm never going to be like the front page trending topic recommended to everybody videos. But hey, if you're watching enough other um, or somebody else is watching enough other uh, Hearts of Iron type videos from some of the other YouTubers, maybe some of these videos will get or you might also like recommended, you know, the thing down on the right side of your page. Um, so more comments, the better. 
um, but also real questions, suggestions, correction, love that kind of stuff too. Thanks so much. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.